الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In this session, I will uh, give a summarized, a general look at Surah Al-Kahf, and inshallah, we will give the details of the tafsir uh, in uh, further sessions, inshallah. But I wanted to sum it up in in uh, one session, uh, and then work on the details uh, later, inshallah. Surah Al-Kahf is a Meccan surah. Uh, and it was revealed after Surah al ghashiyah But the scholars differed what uh, came after Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, Al-Dani said uh, it, uh, Surah Al-Shura, others said Surah Al-Nahl. Uh, the name of the Surah is Al-Kahf or Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, the Surah, Surah Al-Kahf is, uh, the theme of it, is talking about stories. It mentions four different stories. The story of the people of the cave, the story of the man with two gardens, the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Al-Khadr, and the story of Dil Qarnayn. It has also instructions before and after and within these stories that guide the slave to sound faith and uh, it enlightens him about the way he needs to conduct himself in the best way and uh, the best of manners. All of which leads to the bliss in this life and uh, the hereafter. This, this surah starts with praise to Allah, alhamdulillah. Uh, it, it start, Allah starts praising himself for having revealed the book or sent down the book on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to warn and bring glad tidings, good news warn the disbelievers from associating with Allah or denying the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and bring glad tidings to the believers of the support of Allah azza wa jal on one hand and the abundant reward uh, in the hereafter. And it confirms, the introduction of the surah uh, confirms that the uh, temptation and uh, beauty of this life is nothing but a temporary pleasure which eventually fades away and departs. Then the surah starts listing these four stories. These four stories revolve around one concept, the concept of trials and the way out. Al-Fitan. Trials, temptations, tribulations, and the way out. The first story is the story of the people of the cave. The people of the cave is an example of those who believed and their faith and belief was more important. And this is a test, test pertaining to one's faith, one's religion. So they believed and their faith for them was more important than anything in this life. They were the, the, the children, the, these youth were the children of the elite of the community. So they favored Allah Azza wa Jal and his faith over the uh, comfortable life they were leading. It's an example uh, for the conflict between truth and falsehood in this life and that the way out of this is to resort to Allah Azza wa Jal, remain firm and resort to Allah Azza wa Jal for help. And within the surah, Allah Azza wa Jal, or after the surah, Allah Azza wa Jal instructs the Prophet ﷺ to be patient with those weak who followed him, the poor people, the poor companions, the oppressed companions who followed him and shun those arrogant disbelievers who denied his message. Uh, again, this is pointing back to the believing youth versus the disbelievers who wanted to force them out of their faith, which made them go and take refuge in the cave. The ca second story is the story of the man with two gardens. Now, this story is pertaining to the tribulations or trials pertaining to wealth. 
a believer who's firm on his faith and a disbeliever whom Allah granted two gardens, blessed him with wealth, huge wealth, perfect wealth, which he took for granted and did not attribute this favor to Allah and uh, insisted to deny. Now, again, Allah Azza wa after this, gave a similitude to this life and, and how fast it, it finishes and it disappears. So, pleasures of this life, you either leave it or it leaves you. You leave it by death or it leaves you when Allah decrees that you become poor or something happens that you no longer possess this wealth. Allah gave a similitude of plants that are irrigated by rain and they flourish and become strong and green and flowery and fruitful and then eventually dry out and die. And this is exactly the example of this life. Regardless of how beautiful it is, one day you will die and I will die and it will no longer remain. It will be as good as dry plantations and dead plantations. And this is exactly what happened to the wealth of the disbeliever. Allah Azza wa also in this story, out of His mercy, gives respite to those who are sinning. Just like He delayed this man, giving him a chance, sending him the believer to remind him. Have you disbelieved in the one who has created you? And then when Allah Azza wa Jal takes to punish, when he seizes, he does not let go. The third story is the story of Al-Khadr with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and it is pertaining to the trial of knowledge. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam thought he was the most knowledgeable. When he was asked, is there anyone more knowledgeable than yourself? He said, no. So Allah Azza wa wanted to humble him, wanted to teach him a lesson. And he, alayhi salatu was salam, was humble and showed the best example of the student of knowledge who is keen on learning. Some people take knowledge as a tool to become arrogant. It becomes a source of destruction for them. So it's a trial. Uh, the fourth story is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And it is a story pertaining to the trial of power and authority. Dhul Qarnayn was a man who had power, but he did not misuse his power. Rather, he utilized it for the benefit of people and attributed things to Allah. What Allah Azza wa gave me and enabled me to possess is better. They were offering him money. He said, no, what Allah gave me. So he attributed his power and his authority to Allah Azza wa Now, the story is finished. And then the conclusion of the story, of the surah, is just like the introduction of the surah. It speaks about the consequence of those who believe versus those who disbelieve and confirms divinity and lordship to Allah Azza wa Jal and the, that He possesses absolute sovereignty and power and control. Just like He does in this life, He will in the hereafter. This is a general and very summarized uh, tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. Now, something very, very important here, which I want to bring to your attention. Remember when we were speaking about the virtues of Surah Al-Kahf? One of the virtues, and we said it was the most important of all, is that it protects against the harm and evil and tribulations and trials of 
الدجال What's the connection? There is no mention made in Surah Al-Kahf about Ad-Dajjal. So what's the connection? The connection is that, as you noticed, Surah Al-Kahf revolves around, the theme of it is, in the four stories, about trials pertaining to four things. Pertaining to faith, pertaining to wealth, pertaining to knowledge, and pertaining to power and authority. Now these very things are going to be the source of test and trial that Dajjal will have with which he will mislead people. And notice the Prophet ﷺ in the virtues spoke about the first ten verses and the last ten verses which confirmed Aqeedah. Confirm divinity and lordship to Allah. Ad Dajjal is going to come and say, I am Allah. So this protects you. Now let's look at these four tests, these four trials of Ad Dajjal and connect them to Surah Al Kahf. The first one is the uh, trial pertaining to faith. Uh, Ashab Al Kahf, the first story were tested regard, pertaining to their faith. People will be tested with a dajjal regarding their faith because he is going to claim that he is Allah and asks them to worship him. Uh, in one of the narrations, he will bring a, uh, a Bedouin. And this is... Uh, reported by Ibn Majah and classified as authentic by Al-Bani. Uh, he will tell him, if I bring your dead parents back to life, would you worship me? Would you believe that I'm your Lord? He said, yes. So two devils will take the form of his parents and walk up to him. He will see them and they will say, son, he is your Lord, so worship Him. So this is a test pertaining to the believer's faith and religion. Uh, in another, uh, or another example is that he will bring a young man full of youth and power and energy and he will split him in two halves with a saw. And in one of the narrations, he would walk between the two halves. And then he would command the, 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 the young man who was killed to come back to life. And Allah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, so Allah will resurrect him back to life. Why? It's a test. So this is a test pertaining to people's uh, faith. The test pertaining to wealth. He will command the sky and it will drop rain at the area he commands it to drop rain at. He will command plants and uh, crops and fruits to grow and they will grow and will ripe up. Subhanallah. All with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal to test people. He would instruct a dry, infertile piece of land in the desert to become fertile and grow plants, and it will. So he possesses all of this power that results in wealth, knowledge, the trial pertaining to knowledge. He will impress people with the knowledge he possesses. He will know where the treasures, he will know the knowledge of the unseen. He will know where the treasures of the land uh, are. They're hidden, they're under the ground, and they will command them and they will come up from under the ground to surface, to the surface of the ground. So this is pertaining to his knowledge. And they will not just come up, by the way, they will come up and follow him. The treasures will come up, will come out and follow him. The last test is per pertaining to power and authority. Al-Masih al-Dajjal will control every land 
as in the narration, he will not leave a land except that he will enter and control except two places. Mecca and Medina, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ibn Majah. He said, except Mecca and Medina, because they have angels surrounding them, protecting them, the two cities, from uh, Ad Dajjal, preventing him from entering the, uh, the, the two cities. Uh, this is the, the connection between uh, Ad Dajjal and Surah Al Kaf. And again, if you notice, the introduction and the conclusion are the verses we are instructed to memorize which are pertaining to the oneness of Allah, the divinity of Allah, and the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, the sound faith and creed, and that Allah will resurrect the hereafter, which is the end of the surah, and uh, give each his due recompense. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from the trials uh, of this life and the trials of Ad Dajjal, Allahumma Ameen, and we ask Him to grant us a good end and make the last thing we say before we depart La ilaha illallah, Allahumma Ameen, Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, Shadu an la ilaha illa ant, Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.